Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of Cameralabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Nikkor 70-300mm VR lens. Here it is, the 70-300mm. It's a telephoto zoom lens that's designed for use on both Nikon's digital and film SLRs. That's right, film SLRs, remember them? That means that this lens is actually corrected for full frame use, so it's also fully compatible with Nikon's full frame D3 digital SLR. I've got it mounted here on a D80, which is a DX format model, which means any lens you attach effectively has its field of view reduced by 1.5 times. So, put a 70 to 300 millimeter on it, and it'll effectively perform like a 105 to 450 millimeter. Now, 450 millimeter is a very, very powerful focal length, and it allows you to pull in some really distant details. We've got some examples coming up in just a moment about how you might use that in practice. It's also a VR model. Now VR stands for vibration reduction and that means it actually features a special optical element built into the lens that actually adjusts as you take the picture to help compensate for camera shake. And typically it allows you to handhold exposures three to four times slower than normal. And the benefit of having it built into the lens is that you'll see the stabilizing effect through the optical viewfinder. And that can be very reassuring, especially when you're composing shots at longer focal lengths. Now this lens is also an AFS model, which in Nikon terminology means it features an SWM focusing motor. And that means several things in practice. First of all, it makes it fully compatible with the D40 and D40X models. But something you'll enjoy across the whole range with SWM is quicker and quieter focusing. I'll give you a demonstration of that right now. I'm going to hold the lens right up to the camera here, and I'd like you to just keep an eye on the end element here, and listen very carefully as I half press the shutter release. That sound was actually the lens focusing from one extreme to the other and back again. And you'll have heard that it was very, very quiet in practice and also pretty quick. If I turn the camera around here, you'll also see that there's a little window here that shows the actual focusing distance marks and also a proper manual focusing ring. And while I've got the lens in this position pointing up, it gives us a good opportunity to zoom it in to show you how much this lens barrel actually extends in practice. There it is at 300 millimeter. It's fairly long, but par for the course for a telephoto zoom lens of this particular range. Now the zoom ring is actually quite stiff, and at first you might think, oh, well, that's not very good, but it does have one major benefit, which is that this lens really doesn't suffer from creep at all. If I just adjust it very slightly here, remember it's pointing straight upwards, it's not falling down under its own weight. So that's actually quite handy to have in practice. In terms of build quality, it's roughly equivalent to the 18-70mm to general purpose lens. So if you're familiar with that one, you'll know what to expect from this. It's a step up from models like the 18-55, to or in terms of telephoto zooms, the 55-200mm. to millimeter. And in fact, speaking of the 18-70, to this lens perfectly complements it. So we're going to start off our examples here by having a look at the actual coverage that this lens would give you in practice when used in conjunction with the general purpose model. To illustrate the coverage of the 70 to 300 mm in practice on a D80 body, we're going to start off with some pictures taken with a general purpose zoom. Here's a shot taken with the DX 18 to 70 mm zoom lens zoomed all the way out to 18 mm. And it's capturing a nice wide field of view here of this landscape. So now here's a shot taken at 70 mm with the 70 to 300 mm and you can see that it's got a nice tighter view in the middle. So this is where that general purpose lens stops and where this telephoto zoom starts. But of course, this telephoto zoom can get in much, much closer. Here it is zoomed all the way into 300 millimeter, working at an effective focal length of 450 millimeter. And as you can see, that allows you to get really very, very close to distant subjects. So to recap, if you have an 18 to 70 and the 70 to 300, this is the complete range you can expect in practice. Here you are at 18 millimeter, capturing a nice wide angle field. And now here at 300mm, getting really, really close to your subject. This kind of lens is ideal if you want to take pictures of wildlife. Here's a photograph of a bird taken with this lens fully zoomed into 300mm from a reasonable distance away. And you can see that it still managed to fill the entire frame. Now if you're really, really serious about bird photography and other types of wildlife, you might want something a little bit longer still. But it's still a very, very flexible range to have at your disposal. 
It's also really useful for portrait work. Here's another picture that we took with the lens fully zoomed into 300mm and with the aperture wide open and you can see it's really thrown that background out of focus. More practically you'd probably stand a little bit closer and zoom the lens out to maybe 200mm or perhaps even 100mm for portrait photography. But the great thing is that all of those focal lengths are available with this lens so it makes it very very flexible again if you're into taking pictures of people. But it's not just about people and wildlife. This lens can also be pretty useful when it comes to taking close-up photos. This image of a flower was taken again fully zoomed in at 300mm and at the lens's closest focusing distance. And that still puts you over one metre away which can be handy if for example the subject itself isn't that close to you or perhaps you don't even want to get that close to the subject. But once again it does allow you to take some really nice close-up pictures. The Nikkor 70-300mm VI is a very classy telephoto zoom lens. The build quality is excellent, the VR facilities are genuinely effective, and the image quality is also very, very good. Remember, this lens is corrected for use on a full frame body, so when you have it mounted on a crop frame body, like the D80, you're effectively only using the best part of the optics. And when you compare it directly against DX format telephoto zooms, like say the DX 55-200mm, you'll notice that this model will consistently outperform it in terms of sharpness and contrast throughout its range. Now as you'll see from our full results at www.cameralabs.com, the differences between these two lenses can be quite subtle, but they are always in the favour of this model, so if you're after the best quality, this is the one to go for. It is however quite big and heavy, so if you want something smaller and lighter, you should be looking at the DX 55-200mm. And the choice of these two lenses also boils down a great deal to which general purpose zoom you're going to match them up with. Now if you have the DX 18-70mm and you're after something to perfectly match its range and build quality, then this is the model you should be going for. They're very very similar in terms of build and optical quality and the ranges perfectly complement each other. That's not to say though that if you have the 18 to 55 you shouldn't go for this. It's a really nice step up in terms of quality and you certainly won't miss the range between 55 and 70 millimeter. But if you do own the 18 to 55 and you're perfectly happy with the build quality of that lens and you're after just a budget telephoto zoom, then do consider the DX 55 to 200 millimeter. It's an excellent lens. And as luck would have it, we have full reviews of both these lenses at cameralabs.com. So head on over to the website to see how they actually perform directly against each other. And in the full review of the 70 to 300 millimeter, you'll see some sample images of how you can use it in practice. So head on over to www.cameralabs.com to see which telephoto zoom lens is going to be best for your Nikon body.